Welcome to Langer's Legion. I'm Langer and let's talk Star Wars Legion. In today's video, we're going to discuss table layout and what you should know. So let's get into it. Welcome to another how to play video for Star Wars Legion. This time I thought I would cover something that on the surface is less sexier than battle forces and tier lists, but nonetheless extremely important, and that's tabletop design and layout. I mean, you can't really play a tabletop miniatures war game without a tabletop. And table design, especially if playing competitively, can have a huge impact on the game if not balanced correctly or without keeping objectives in mind when laying out the terrain. Now, if you're playing with your friends at your local game store or on the kitchen table at home, you might not, and fairly speaking, focus on this area as much. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. We are playing this game for fun after all. But if you are taking things up a notch and are playing competitively, good table design will be of importance. Which is good because I'm making a video on table layout and you're watching a video on the topic. So hopefully this is a good use of both of our time. And as a disclaimer, this is something I myself continue to work on and improve using these guidelines. And I welcome any suggestions, comments, or feedback down below as we're just here to try to help everybody have a better experience when they're playing Star Wars Legion. So if you ask on Reddit or maybe your favorite Legion Discord server, how much train should I have on my table? More than likely, you're going to get a response of somewhere in the 25 to 35% range assuming we're talking about a standard three foot by six foot table. And this is not a coincidence, though if you are new to the game, you might not know, as Fantasy Flight Games, the original developer of Star Wars Legion, published a document titled Star Wars Legion Tournament Regulations. Creative name, I know, but way back in 2020, and I'll post a link to this document down below. Now, this document covered most everything someone would need to know on how to run a Star Wars Legion event, but specifically, it had a section that covered terrain guidelines. And why AMG hasn't followed suit with a similar document providing these same level of details, I don't know. Unless I'm just unaware of it, and if that's the case, if you are, please again, post something in the comments, a link or whatever to the document and you know help those out that found this video. Anyways, the guidelines start with four key points to consider. One, the terrain should cover 25% of the table at minimum and 35% at maximum. Again, sound familiar? Two, terrain should include a mixture of scattered terrain, line of sight blocking terrain, area terrain, and terrain of varying heights. And at this point, I'm assuming you would not, you know what all that stuff means. Uh, the terrain should include a mix of light and heavy cover, and medium and large pieces of, of terrain should be placed roughly range one of each other. Now, Going beyond these core four guidelines, they do go on further to say that you should have three to five medium sized pieces of line of sight blocking terrain of height one or lower, one to three large line of sight blocking terrain pieces of height two or higher, two to four uh, pieces of area terrain, zero to two pieces of difficult area terrain, and these can be the same pieces that we just talked about in the area terrain section, and finally, uh, eight to 12 pieces of scattered terrain. All right, so now how do we put this information to practical use? I'm glad you asked. Starting with the 25 to 30% number, I'm a visual learner, and so I thought the best way of showing this was with a grid layout. A standard game of Legion, as we talked about, is played on a three foot by six foot mat. So that is 36 inches by 72 inches and broken down into Legion range one increments aka six inches. That gives us a total of a 12 by six grid as seen here in this diagram with 72 boxes. Now, with my excellent math skills, I can determine that 25% of our 72 squares is 18. So I need to just fill an area that is a range three up and a range six across with those various pieces of terrain we talked about before. And this picture I'm showing here represents what that would look like. And I'm using the Kashyyyk terrain that uh, I use on my tabletop to kind of show that. And I've got a mixture of area terrain, height two terrain, scatter terrain, etc. Now, from here, you might be thinking, great, I've got the 25% terrain. I'm just going to start spreading this out. and I'm going to get to playing, but not so fast. Additional thought is needed 
And more specifically, how is your terrain going to account for the various deployment and objective strategies one can play in Legion? And I've seen this following image, though I recreated this version for this video, posted on Reddit as well on fifth, the Fifth Trooper Network blog regarding table design, link below, as I believe it is a valuable reference to consider when talking about these additional elements. What you can see outlined for both blue and red players are the various deployment options, advanced positions, major offensive, danger close, etc., along with the markings for key positions, which are the green dots, and a circle around those dots for the intercept the transmission, which is based off uh, scoring within range one or units with leaders within range one of these dots. And both of these objectives are extremely common in competitive lists, and keeping these in mind, along with those various deployment types, are key to building a good but fair tabletop. Now, with all that said, now we can actually start moving and placing the terrain around. So let's roll the tape. Starting off, you can see here that I'm following that 25% rule pretty much by filling up this range three by range six area with my various pieces of terrain. From there, I start moving the pieces around the tabletop. I start first with the largest piece of terrain, which is this Kashyyyk hut, and place these in the center of the table. Now, normally I would not put such a large piece of terrain smack dab in the middle of the table, but as you'll see from some side angle shots later, this is a very open piece of terrain that I normally play as non-light of sight blocking. But keep this in mind for the middle of the board, while you might be tempted to put large pieces of terrain or line of sight, block, line of sight blocking pieces here, in practice, you really just want light or heavy cover pieces of terrain to also keep hostage exchange in mind is how you, you know, you're going to place those initial units on the map. I continue moving and placing pieces on the tabletop, trying to place line of sight blocking pieces on each of the four board, four board edges or close to them as I can. Placing the area terrain pieces, as you see here, one side has this rock formation, the other has this grouping of trees. And then each side has a height one and height two terrain pieces that units can either climb on or if they have key, the jump keyword, they can get to. From there, I'm moving the scattered terrain, which is these orange boxes and these uh, base trees that I've made, along with these 3D printed tree logs and taller trees that I use as heavy cover. And finally, you know, this is a me thing, but going back to that range one, I'm using a speed two movement tool just to kind of check the distances between each of the terrain pieces, just to make sure they're all kind of kind of in a good lineup for, per se. But before we start deploying our units, let's have a look at how I did with the placement of the terrain considering the intercept transmissions and key positions you know, diagram that I showed before. All right. And as you can see, not too bad. Looks like I might have been off just a little bit with these pieces on the left and the right for the terrain for KP and uh, intercept the transmissions, but maybe, and this is what I'm gonna go with, I just didn't line up the, the graphic correctly. But hopefully from this, the point does come across on what I'm actually trying to accomplish. And with that, we've got a table set up for some Legion. Now, I took a few side profile pictures so you could really get a sense of the board as the top down view does leave a bit to be desired on, on viewing of the various heights of the terrain. And as you can see, the board isn't perfect. You know, I probably could have done some things differently or some things I'd like to go back and adjust, but I think you still could play a good game of Legion on it. Now, that's just my thoughts and my opinions. And if you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching. But if you have additional thoughts or comments on table design or layout for Legion, you know, I welcome any comments below. Again, we're just trying to help others that might stumble across this video or, hey, I might learn something new. But until the next video, hail to the Empire.